Thank you for joining us for CBN News. Watch I'm Ephraim Graham. Here's some of the top stories we're following for you right now in the CBN newsroom. Negotiations continue on Capitol Hill today to avoid another government shutdown. Illegal immigration and border security are still key issues, but those the House passed a short-term spending measure Tuesday night. Now Senate leaders are closing in on a larger long-term measure. The deadline to keep the government open is just one day away. A California judge has ruled in favor of a Christian baker who had refused to make a same-sex wedding cake last August. Kathy Miller owns Tastery's Bakery. The judge has found her not guilty of discrimination and ruled the state cannot force her to act against her sincerely held beliefs. Rescuers in Taiwan are searching for trapped people after an earthquake hit Tuesday night. The 6.4 earthquake caused at least four buildings to cave in. Thousands of homes are without electricity and water. At least six people are dead, while 256 people are injured. 88 others, though, are still missing. You can learn more about these stories and others by visiting CBNNews.com throughout the day. Big concerns right now about this year's flu season. More than 50 children have already died. Hospitals are overflowing with patients, and the season is expected to last for several more weeks. Our Heather Sells is on this story. The flu season is getting worse, and health officials are warning, watch out. The flu is prevalent in every single state of the continental United States. The Centers for Disease Control says well over 14,000 people have been hospitalized with the bug since the season began. That's double last year's number and the highest recorded since the government started tracking it in 2010. The types of symptoms we're seeing for the flu would be a dry cough, uh, muscle aches, fevers, chills, sometimes a headache, sore throat, um, usually a quick onset of these symptoms. At least 53 children have died from the flu, including 16 last week. Seven-year-old Savannah Jesse of Indiana tested positive for the flu. She died just one day after being rushed to the hospital. Everybody is devastated. It's, you'd never expect it to happen to you. To stop the spread, some schools are shutting down for days at a time. This Catholic school in Illinois closed its doors after more than a quarter of its students got sick. In Alabama, the Marshall County School District closed after students and staff became ill. It's an airborne problem. Uh, when they're coughing, uh, sneezing, or even talking, it's when they're spreading this. One piece of good news, this season's flu shot targets the very strains that are making everyone sick. It's why authorities are still pushing the vaccine, even though it's no guarantee. You reduce your chance of getting the flu by about a third. So that's, you know, not zero. What is a zero percent protection is not getting a vaccine. Doctors also recommend avoiding people with the flu because they can breathe the virus out in particles that hover in the air. They suggest washing your hands frequently since the virus can live on hard surfaces up to a day. Also strengthening your immune system with probiotics, sleep and stress management. Most flu seasons last up to 20 weeks. Authorities say this season could still have several more weeks to go. Heather Sell, CBN News. Vice President Mike Pence will attend the Winter Olympics in South Korea this week, but his goal isn't just to see the games. Our national security correspondent Eric Rosales shows us why North Korea remains in the crosshairs of the vice president and the United States. Vice President Mike Pence will soon leave for South Korea. By his side will be Fred Warmbier, the father of Otto Warmbier. The 22-year-old who died following 15 months of imprisonment inside North Korea. The Trump administration plans to move away from a military rhetoric and focus on North Korea's human rights atrocities. There could not be a more powerful statement. Considering what the Warmbier family has gone through over the last 18 months to two years, I think this is a, a powerful statement that the Trump administration is trying to show that not only does North Korea have nuclear weapons and missiles that can kill millions of people, but the human rights violations that this regime has committed are on par perhaps with Nazi Germany. A White House official told reporters during the games the vice president will quote, make clear that the maximum pressure on the Kim regime will only intensify adding that the vice president will not allow the North Korean regime to hijack messaging of Olympics with propaganda. 
On Sunday, North Korean International Olympic Committee member Chang Ung arrived in South Korea ahead of the 2018 Winter Olympics. He said he hopes everything goes well for the Olympics and relations between the two Koreas. North and South Korea agreed to march under a united flag during the opening ceremony. Pentagon top brass say that they're encouraged with the dialogue between the North and the South and want it to continue but add it has no effect on U.S.-South Korea relations. The relationship between Seoul and Washington has never been closer, so we look forward to more progress. We're very capable of, of countering any threat to the United States, its allies or its partners. But amid the renewed relations between the two Koreas during the games, North Korea still plans to send a message to America ahead of the ceremonies. Pentagon sources tell CBN News it appears North Korea is planning to show off dozens of long-range missiles at a parade this Thursday, the day before the Winter Olympics are set to begin. Really, it shows what North Korea's intent is. They have no intent of having a detente with South Korea or talking with the United States. When the Olympic flame dies out, many say North Korea will continue with its games as it continues to test its intercontinental ballistic missiles. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Coming up, a major Hollywood producer is planning to shine a light in a world surrounded by darkness. Roma Downey reveals her plans for her light workers group. We'll have more on this next. A thousand evangelical leaders are sending a message in advance of tomorrow's national prayer breakfast. Popular Christian authors like Max Lucado and Beth Moore join pastors from every state signing their names to a full page ad in The Washington Post, urging the president and Congress to act on immigration and refugee policy. The World Relief Ministry is sponsoring the ad. The group is united against the president's DACA deadline, and it is pushing for a more welcoming immigration and refugee policy. Actress and movie maker Roma Downey has an extensive resume. The groundbreaking Bible series and Ben-Hur are just a few major projects she and her husband Mark Burnett have produced together. And now Roma has a new project that's all about spreading hope and encouragement. CBN's Jenna Browder sat down with her to talk about it. Overnight, a violent and deadly 4th of July in Chicago. In graphic detail, accusing Harvey Weinstein and adding to the list that has now grown to more than 60. In a time of so much negative news, some good news, or better yet, a glimmer of light. How do you go from good to great? Let's talk about it. Introducing Lightworkers, a new digital platform created by actress and producer Roma Downey. And I said to my husband, I wish somebody somewhere would generate a good news channel where we really could celebrate all the amazing things that people are doing at home and abroad and, and speak to the kindness in people's hearts and speak to the heroes in communities. Have you ever heard the expression, it's better to light one candle than curse the darkness? Well, when Roma and her team Mark share Burnett encouraging together. stories across popular categories, entertainment, lifestyle, family, and faith. I wanted to create a gathering place for short, shareable, short shareable, that's almost hard to say, short shareable, <laughs> snackable, mm -hmm. inspirational and positive content that if you saw something on lightworkers.com, you wanted to share it with your mom or you wanted to send it to your son or you wanted to just share it in some way because it touched your heart. That's what we're doing. We talked at Washington's newly opened Museum of the Bible, a project close to Roma's heart. She and her husband, Mark Burnett, got on board early on and donated this original Tiffany stained glass window. For people who are not believers, what do you hope they take away from this museum? Well, I think they're going to come here and just see that, you know, the influence that the Bible has had through time and through history. For anybody that's just seeing about it on television or reading about it in the newspapers, um, I would encourage folks to grab their kids and, and to get on a, on a car, get on a plane and come to Washington, D.C. This is a must-see part of your museum experience. From the good news of the gospel to some not so good news, we discuss the culture in Hollywood and growing flood of sexual harassment allegations. I think just the fact that this story, it keeps unfolding in new and horrible ways, in and of itself demands a change um, that uh, 
you know, is already occurring. You know, you see it within companies that uh, that memos are coming down from the top that this sort of behavior will not be tolerated. There will be zero tolerance for it. Roma says she's hopeful for new generations coming into the entertainment industry. You know, I don't think we've seen the end of it yet. I think that we're going to see more, but I do uh, believe that it will bring about a much needed change. And she's a part of that change. It is with the same passion and purpose that we are launching lightworkers.com. We invite you to join our online community of optimists, believers, dreamers, innovators, and doers. Following Lightworkers and their other projects, the couple is working on a new Netflix series called Messiah. It's a contemporary show uh, set in modern day and uh, it's a very p provocative uh, story, but I think we'll get people addressing what, what would you do if, uh, if Jesus were to come back? What would happen in our world if he were to come back and come back, you know, tomorrow? Mm -hmm. uh, and are you ready? It will start asking these sorts of questions of, uh, of society, and I, you know, we welcome that kind of conversation. Um, because we know that, um, that that's what's needed, that we need to be reminded of, uh, of the goodness of the Lord. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Up next, the story of a runaway slave who escaped to freedom inside a box, along with a man who helped more than 2,000 find their way to freedom. Our leaders ratified the 13th Amendment to the Constitution 150 years ago after a long and bloody civil war. It abolished slavery in the United States, but the battle for freedom began long before that with the abolitionist movement. Thousands, black and white, risked everything to set people free. Charlene Aaron has the story. March 30th, 1849, a box arrives in Philadelphia with fugitive slave Henry Brown inside. Shipped from Richmond, Virginia, 27 hours earlier, he escaped with help from men on both sides of the racial divide. The Underground Railroad was collaborative. You needed partners, you needed blacks and whites working jointly together to help people escape from slavery. People have seen the Underground Railroad as the first integrated resistance movement. Anyone involved faced great risk. If caught, slaves were severely beaten and in some cases executed. Free blacks were sold into slavery. In the case of Henry Box Brown, he got away. But the white man who helped him served over seven years in the Richmond Penitentiary. If you assisted someone to escape from the Underground Railroad and you were white, you were seen as a far greater threat than a free black or an enslaved person. And so the punishment was extremely severe. In 1850 and 1860, you can look at the census records and see how many people were in the Virginia penitentiary with the charge that they were helping someone try to escape. But many were willing to take the risk, especially at the Anti-Slavery Society in Philadelphia. It was a key location in the Underground Railroad. Most fugitive slaves came from the Upper South, particularly Virginia and Maryland. The Anti-Slavery Society was founded in 1775 with members of both races. By 1838, they had their own building, but was burned to the ground after just three days, forcing them to go undercover. Society member William Still kept extensive records and published them after the Civil War in a book called The Underground Railroad. He gives examples of fugitives getting help in the form of homes, job training, money, even clothing. By the 1830s, the northern factories were pumping out um, a type of cloth that was used in slave clothing. So you actually were branded by the clothing you had. So one of the first things you wanted to do once you got to the north is change your clothes. Abigail Goodwin donated her best clothes. Still writes, her sister has often said that few beggars came to our doors whose garments were so worn, forlorn, and patched up as abbeys. Like a great many white abolitionists, Goodwin was a devout Quaker. Originally, they called themselves seekers of the light. 
but they were given the name of Quakers because it was said that they trembled at the word of God. Their battle against slavery came from core beliefs, originating with founder George Fox. He came to the belief that there was that of God in every person. That's the wording that he used. There is that of God in every man. Quakers signed the first anti-slavery resolution in the American colonies. The most important thing about Quakers is that you live your, you live your values. And they tried to do that in their, the, every aspect of their lives, whether it was buying produce that was not made, uh, grown or created by enslaved people, whether it was wearing garments that were not uh, produced from cotton. This is the Apoquinimink Meeting House, built in 1785. Just 20 square feet, it is presumably the smallest brick house of worship in America. But the Bible says, despise not small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. This was a preparative meeting, which meant that this was where people came weekly for their worship. In the attic, where children met for Sunday school, is a hiding place for runaway slaves. Harriet Tubman is said to have stayed here. Tubman collaborated often with Thomas Garrett, a member of the Apoquinimink meeting. Garrett helped over 2,000 runaway slaves make their way to freedom. Fined heavily, his home was put up for auction. The sheriff said, Thomas, I hope you will never be caught at this again. Garrett's reply was typical of most agents in the Underground Railroad. Friend, I haven't a dollar in the world. But if thee knows a fugitive who needs breakfast, send him to me. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Those of faith fighting for freedom. Stay with us. There's much more of CBN News Watch coming up right after this. Peter Rabbit's longtime feud with Mr. McGregor reaches new heights. Both are competing for the affections of an animal lover who lives next door. Here's your Studio 5 first look at the film. Rabbits are generous, honest, pure, graceful creatures. That's really sweet to see this sort of person who's fully communicating at all times with the animals around us. She's a bit like Snow White meets Jane Goodall. Our natural rabbit's pace should be able to keep up. Ah! Peter Rabbit is awesome because, especially in this film, he's, he's James Corden plays him and he's so funny, of course, but he's doing the wrong thing, but he really means well. I think he's, he's really a good guy. Peter, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Never stopped me before. He's a classic underdog. He's a rascal. Sorry! Wait, didn't you try to eat me? Show me your teeth. <laughs> it was you! I knew it! How are you? So good to see you. He's a leader and he has this confidence. No guts, no glory. He's got this zest for life and his adorable nature allows him to get away with so much mischief. He was like... Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I can't think of one thing that could stop our fun. Hello. Ah! Run! Uh, this way! I think it's his sweet and adorable nature that allows him to get away with so much mischief. Checking on your new neighbour? I'll explain it to him. We all share our land around here. Hello, I'm B. These gates are incredibly sturdy. I just need to keep the wildlife out where they belong. You're joking, right? Yes. Flopsy Mobsy and Contel are Peter's sidekicks, really. Um, they're his family. And I think it weighs quite heavily on Peter's shoulders that, that he has to look after them. Flopsy! Yeah. Flopsy kind of has middle child syndrome. Sorry about Dad's jacket. I'm sorry you lost Dad's jacket. <gasps> I just said that. She kind of does have a little bit of nervous energy. And she has a lisp. Yeah, it's actually a bit confusing. It's fun to have the sister dynamic <laughs> and be playing around all the time. Oh no, I think we have a problem. Everything's upside down. Mopsy is the eldest of the triplets. Coming from the oldest, it just kind of means more. She's smart and feisty. <laughs> She's an adorable, one-foot-tall rebel. Shh, I can lead lips. Ooh. Oh, good! Quintel represents the sort of loose cannon. I can fly! Oh, it's OK! I've got 11 more ribs! She is a little bit mental. Should we break both ankles or just one? I'm sorry, that was weird. Both. She's awesome. OK, so he's tricked her. 
There's only one way out of this. He's got to go. <laughs> Did you know they set traps in my bed? He's a rabbit. It's your normal battle between two men over um, a woman who's probably better than both of them. Except for the woman in this is hilarious. And one of the men is a rabbit. I have a vermin problem. An electric fence will keep him out. What happens if we touch it? We can't give up. It's our home. It's an adventure story, really. You're mine now, rabbit. Yay! It's so, so funny. But it has a lot of heart. And at the core, it is about being there for your family and the people that you love. Thomas! What's going on here? My two boys getting along. Nothing could make me happier. Ooh, I'm a rebel just for kicks now. Time now for your Wednesday word, and here's the thought to consider. It takes faith to be the first at anything. There is no guided path to follow. You are the pioneer. You and only God can take you to the next step. Now ask yourself, what is God calling you to be the very first to do? That you might open and clear the path for others. Don't be afraid. Walk in faith, knowing it takes faith to be the first. That is a wrap for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about always at CBNNews.com. Goodbye and God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.